Welcome to day six of the 25 apps in 25 days series, the series where I showcase a brand new app every single day for 25 days in a row. And today we've got another incredible free and open source app, but this is one that the team behind Android most likely hates because it completely replaces the stock, very basic default APK installer with a way more feature packed one. Before we get to the app though, if you haven't yet subscribed, then doing so would be hugely appreciated because who knows if this series proves popular enough, it might even make it a yearly tradition. But if you are already subscribed, then do me a favor by hitting that thumbs up button below and by leaving a comment, letting me know what your favorite app has been so far. I've also got a playlist linked in the description, which contains every episode of the series and I'll obviously keep updating it every single day. As always, just a reminder that this video and this series does not have any sponsors, but it is supported by those of you who download and use any of my apps, as well as those who purchase any of the digital products I sell on my website, all of which will of course be linked below. And I do wanna quickly highlight the companion app to this series, my app shelf, which is a library of handpicked app recommendations from yours truly. We literally add brand new app recommendations every single day, so it's definitely worth checking out. But with that being said, let's jump straight into day six's application. All right, so the app we're discussing today is called Installer X Revived. And I was actually initially gonna showcase this app later in the series, but I actually found it to be incredibly useful to have installed and set up early in the process, because there's gonna be a pretty large collection of apps that we're gonna be downloading and installing from locations other than the Google Play Store throughout this series. And if we go through the process of installing them without making use of the Installer X Revived app, then it actually makes setting them up a much more complex process. So I'll probably point back to this video several times throughout this series, but with Installer X Revived downloaded and installed, I will just flag it does require permissions to be granted via Shizuku to work. So let's start by getting that set up. So you obviously need to first download the Shizuku app, which I'm gonna assume that you already have if you're following along, but I'll link it down below in case you do need to download it. But to get Shizuku to work, we actually first need to enable our phone's developer options. We can do this by coming into our phone settings, then scrolling down to the about phone section. Then the location might vary for you, but we're looking for an option that says build number, which for me can be found under this nothing OS section here. But wherever it is, we just need to tap it seven times until our pin shows. Once we've entered our pin, you'll see that it says that we're now a developer and we can now come back twice and open up this system section here. And you should now see this new developer option section has been enabled. And with that now enabled, let's come back into the Shizuku app. And now we'll tap this option here where it says pairing. Then we'll tap where it says developer options. Then we'll scroll down a bit until we find this wireless debugging option and we'll tap to open it. If it's not enabled yet, make sure that you enable it. But from there, we simply need to tap pair device with pairing code. Then you'll see a notification that says enter pairing code. And we just need to tap that and enter the pairing code on screen, which for me is 042050. But this number will be unique every single time. So just keep that in mind. But once it's entered, we can then tap on submit. Now we can come back into the Shizuku app, then come back once, then tap here where it says start. And if all has gone well, Shizuku should become activated. And if you're unsure whether it's worked or not, just check up here. And if it says Shizuku is running, then you're good to go. So with that done, let's open up the Installer X Revived app and walk through its setup process. So we'll come over to the settings page here and I'm gonna first come down a bit and tap this set as default installer option. And that'll bring up our Shizuku prompt, which I wanna allow. So I'll tap allow all the time. And then from there, I essentially wanna to toggle all of these other options on. So I'll leave the disable ADB verify toggle on, then I'll toggle ignore battery optimizations and then tap allow. Then I'll toggle auto set as default installer. And that is the basic setup process complete. So now if I come into Google Chrome, then open up my downloads, for example, then try and install this downloaded APK for the recently featured Pixel Play app. It'll first ask me to grant notification permission, which I wanna do. And from there, you'll see that we get our brand new APK installer interface, which in its basic form already shows us more details than the default option. So we get the package name as well as the version number that we're installing. And if it's a new version of an APK that you already have installed, then it'll also show the previous version number too. Then you can even tap this little icon here and you'll see a few extra options like auto deleting the APK file after the installation is complete, which is great for keeping your phone storage clean. And you can even tap to show the SDK information if you like. Then once you're ready, you tap install and you get a really clean install animation and it'll eventually let you know that the install is indeed complete. So that's the basics out of the way and it's a handy app even just for those features alone. But if you dive into the app settings, there are actually way more features that you can make use of. 
So on this home screen here, we can actually tap this little pencil icon under this default profile, and then we get a bunch of options that we can enable or disable. So for example, you can come down a bit and enable the auto deletion toggle to make it so that every APK file automatically gets deleted after installation rather than having to manually toggle this every single time. Then if we scroll down a bit further, we can also bypass the warning that you get when trying to install older outdated versions of applications by enabling this bypass low target SDK block toggle. You can also enable this allow restricted permissions toggle, which gets around that issue on newer versions of Android where when an app attempts to access accessibility permissions or the like, you have to dig into the app settings, but only via the settings app, then enter your biometrics to allow those restricted settings. With this enabled, you no longer have to do that. And there's also this grant or requested permissions toggle, which will mean you don't have to open up an app's permission settings page to manually grant all of its required permissions. Those two settings alone are serious game changers and having both of those enabled is what's gonna make setting up some of the later apps in this series way, way quicker. You can also enable this allow downgrade toggle, which will mean in theory, you can install an older version of an app even if a newer one is already installed. Although unfortunately, this only works with rooted devices if you're using Android 15 or newer. But anyhow, once you've got everything set up how you want it, you just tap to save it and there you go, all of those changes will be applied for every new APK that you install. And if you wanna take things even a stage further, then you can actually create new profiles that have custom settings for specific apps. So let's tap on add, then I'll give this profile the name Chrome. And once that's typed, I'll tap the tick icon. Then all I'll do here as an example is enable the auto deletion option, then I'll save the profile. Then I can tap this little icon here and I can choose any app that I want this profile to become active for. And I'll need to tap the more icon up here and enable this display system app option to see the Google Chrome app. But with that enabled, I can now search for and then enable the Chrome toggle. So that means anytime I install an APK from anywhere else but Chrome, let's say the Solid Explorer app, it'll use that default profile, but with all of those settings applied. But then anytime I install an APK via Google Chrome, it'll use that custom profile, which will switch the settings accordingly. Very, very handy stuff. Then real quick, if we come back into the app and open up this preferences page and first tap on theme settings, Obviously, so far we've been using the default Google Material 3 version, which you can actually disable this expressive UI toggle here for a slightly different look if you like, but you can also switch the theme entirely to this MIUI X version, which gives the app a slightly more hyper OS look. I'm gonna come back into the theme settings though and switch this back to Google Material 3. But then if we come back into our preferences and tap on installer settings, there's also a bunch of advanced options under here as well, including switching the install mode from dialog to notification. So if we open up my Chrome downloads and tap to install, you can see what that looks like. And if you're using this on a phone running Android 16, there's actually even a live activity mode as well. You can also switch it to auto notification or auto dialogue, which will just straight install any APK as soon as you tap it, no confirmation required. And if you leave this option set to either of the dialogue modes, then you also have a bunch of tweaks that you can play around with down here as well, including this extended menu option, which when enabled will show you this new menu button. And this will let you customize all of those settings that we previously configured every single time if you like. And I mean, even just these lovely bouncy animations as you tap these various buttons, they are seriously fantastic. And so that is it, an incredibly powerful and useful application. And after seeing everything it's capable of, I'm sure it doesn't come as much of a surprise why I think the Android team ain't too big a fan of it. As always, don't forget to check out my app shelf for even more great app recommendations. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next episode. But aside from that, that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.